When I think about Matthew, one of the first things I think about is his abilities as a drummer. It's what I saw him doing most often, other than stealing people's instruments and playing them. <laughs> but he was, he was a phenomenal drummer. He was an amazing performer. And it's not only his ability to play a piece that I remember, but his ability to improvise. He could come up with uh, <laughs> an improvisation to either fit in with a piece that's already been played or just because he felt like it. And each one felt original and fresh and new. And it was an ability I really uh, admired. I really admired him for it. Start of week number three, and the good weather has joined us again. Let's hope it remains, unlike last week. And it absolutely did not. Like all good musicians, Matthew was able to adapt his drumming style to suit whatever band he was needed to play in. The upshot of this is that it was involved in a lot of different bands. The brass band uh, is what I probably spent most time in, with him in. The wind band uh, was another one. And his, his first love, his preference, was definitely for jazz. He, he loved playing jazz drums. Uh, so the big band and the, the soul band that was uh, also created part way through my time at the school, uh, he really enjoyed being part of those. They were just uh, a great bit of fun for him. In particular, one piece I really remember he enjoyed was called Coconut Champagne. We did it in the big band. Uh, and it's the piece I remember him play most fondly. He asked for us to play it most often. Uh, I remember the first time we went down to Birmingham to play in the Music for Youth Festival. Although we weren't in the Symphony Hall, we were in the Town Hall. Uh, I remember us playing it there. I've got very, very fond memories of that piece with Matthew. Is it day 15? No, it must be day 16. We're on day 16. Wow. This is definitely halfway through. And we are so far past the halfway point in terms of miles and steps. Uh, it's going so well. I'm so pleased of David, Holly and Lucy. And myself. <laughs> We've all put a lot of work into it and there's... There's still a long way to go, but we've smashed the donation target, and I know I've said that four or five times now, but I'm so excited that we've raised so much money. And it hasn't stopped, it keeps going up, so thank you! Again! <laughs> oh. Very pleased, very proud. One of Matthew's other loves in music was conducting. He enjoyed conducting whenever possible. He occasionally conducted the band. We formed small groups and we had a go conducting each other. Um, he'd conduct recordings when he thought we weren't watching. He'd conduct from the back, sitting at his drums. He was never very good at it. I always got the impression that he knew exactly what it was he wanted to convey. He knew what his vision was for this piece of music. And the gestures that he was performing, he couldn't quite convey to us what it was he was trying to tell us in order to instruct us how to play. But the attempt was there and the passion was there and that is something I really remember. Uh, in the same vein, uh, sat at the back doing the drums, he, the, the percussion really was the driving force of all the bands. Uh, if the Drums went slowly, we went slowly. If the band sped up, we sped up. And I like to think, in a way, he was uh, very instrumental. Ah! Pardon the pun. In delivering the way that the pieces turned out in the end. Do you hear that? Bird song. No wind. Day number 17. And. Uh, David told us last night that we've crossed a million steps. One million steps. That's a lot of steps. I can't visualise one million of anything. I'll learn. That's one step. A million of those. We are so very pleased. We know that we're only halfway through. Yesterday was halfway. And we've already cracked it. How far will we get in the end? Remains to be seen. 
When Matthew died, the school and his parents organised a little memorial to him to be placed on school grounds, and so there's a very small, possibly eight foot by eight foot, uh, memorial garden on school premises. And it's got a little bench, and it's nice, and it's got a load of musical instruments that have been converted into flower pots. Dead instruments. Instruments that have definitely had their time. Uh, and there's a snare drum. I think it's made of steel, with some steel sticks. I mean, totally made of steel, like a steel sculpture. I know snare drums have steel around the rim. Um, a little steel sculpture of a snare drum with some steel sticks with Matthew Densfield engraved onto them. It's a lovely little memorial. Uh, and on the wall just behind it, there's a, a blown up image of one of his favourite drum solo pieces. Uh, it's really nice, and I know that his mum puts a lot of time into taking care of it, uh, making it a nice place to be. Matthew enjoyed learning new instruments. Any he could get his hands on. If it was lying around for long enough and it wasn't bolted down, he'd pick it up and have a go on it. Uh, he picked up a second-hand violin once uh, and, and brought it to me and he said, do you think we can get this working? And there was no bridge, there were one or two strings missing. <laughs> I don't seem to remember we, after buying some parts online, we spent about a day trying to get it working. I was not the right person to ask, I'm not an expert in violin playing. Uh, but he tried, I thought, and we had this conversation saying it seems a bit too small to be a violin. Uh, and then we asked someone who plays the violin, and they said, yeah, it's not a full size of violin, it's a child's size, it's three quarters. Uh, ah, did that stop him? No, it didn't. He carried on. More power to him. We're very nearly at the end of week number three. We haven't crept up too much more on the fundraiser, but still, uh, £2,160 is not bad going. It's not bad at all. We were in the press, the printed press. Uh, last week we were online, but this week we're actually in the newspaper. I uh, picked it up, the Rosendale Free Press, page number 11. It looks grand. I've got a copy of it. I took a copy over to Susan Densfield uh, uh, over at his house. Um, it's a nice article. It's the same one as last week. There's still the same inconsistencies. Uh, <laughs> wrong details about me and us, but you know what? It's nice that they've taken the time to put us in and they've put links to, they put instructions on how to find the fundraiser. So that is very kind of them. One of the other things I really miss about Matthew is the times of the day that he would phone up with a question about music. Hey, he'd have a question about theory or a question about how you could uh, write a piece of music for a certain instrument that would be new and innovative. Uh, all times of the day. So everything from 7 o'clock in the morning to last thing at night while I'm in bed and getting ready for something tomorrow. <laughs> or while I'm at the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere on a walk. Uh, yeah, I do kind of miss that. This hair is becoming ridiculous. All I can do is put it up in the hopes that it stays out of my face. I'll have to get another hat. I've got one in my pocket as well. We have arrived at the end of the third week of walking. It's now the Sunday. Because we started on a Monday. So it's, it is actually I the end of the... Actually, we've hit our target. <gasps> is it on? It is. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a holly with me today. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know you were filming. <laughs> <laughs> we have hit our targets. How are much, gonna, are how much are we going over that? How much have we gone over by? Um, 170 pounds. 85. 85? Yeah, 185. Wow, I'm not seeing that. That was only this morning. No, oh, that's fine then. <laughs> We've hit 500 miles. Woo! We You're have dead. definitely passed 500 miles. Doesn't feel so much when there's four of you. <laughs> That's pretty good. We're just talking about stories we can share of Matthew. Because there's some that we're just not going to. <laughs> not appropriate for the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ollie's just reminded us that every morning he would come into whatever room it was, his form room, 43, or B42, yeah, 42. or G7, it, it, it was whatever room he was in, he would come in and play the piano. And sometimes that was the same thing. The same thing over, over and over, and again. over again. Sometimes it was really very nice, it was lovely. And sometimes he'd get to the end and then he'd start back at the beginning. And then again, and then again. <laughs> we go, Matt, shut up! And he'd just switch off to the outside world. He was in Matt land and there was nothing we could do to stop him. <laughs> Any closing thoughts? Ah! <laughs> stop! Sorry, I missed that. Can you do it again? No! This is the halo! <laughs> for Halo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too early, Phil.